This lesson is on the side effects of Ozempic use. So we're going to talk about what Ozempic is and how it works, and then we're going to talk about the side effects and why they occur. So Ozempic is actually a brand name for the medicinal ingredient known as semaglutide. And semaglutide not only comes in the formulation of Ozempic, but it can also occur as a formulation known as Wigovi and Rebelsis. So Ozempic, Wigovi, and Rebelsis are all semaglutide, but they occur in different formulations and have different dosing. So Ozempic is going to be an injectable. It's going to be a medication used primarily to treat type 2 diabetes. And Wigovi is more specifically going to be used for weight loss. Wigovi is also an injectable. And the difference between Wigovi and Ozempic is that Wigovi occurs at higher doses. And then Rebelsis is going to be an oral formulation, so it's going to be taken by mouth. So again, because these medications are all semaglutide, they're all going to have similar effects. And semaglutide itself is going to be a glucagon-like peptide 1 or GLP-1 receptor agonist. So that means that it binds to GLP-1 receptors that are both located in the brain and also located in the GI system or the gastrointestinal system. So in the stomach and in the intestines as well. And we can also see it in the pancreas as well. Now, semaglutide more specifically would be what we call a GLP-1 analog. So it mimics natural GLP-1. So we actually secrete GLP-1 naturally from our cells in the stomach, small intestine, and pancreas. And what the semaglutide is going to do, like our natural GLP-1 would do, is that it's going to cause satiety. It's going to cause satiety by several different mechanisms. Now, satiety is a feeling of being full and not being hungry. So it's going to lead to a feeling of satiety. So it's going to reduce appetite. This is how it works. And it's going to do this by mechanisms in the brain, but also in the stomach. So it can actually slow gastric emptying. So it essentially slows down how much food content is being excreted out of the stomach. So it keeps the food in the stomach, making us feel fuller and makes us feel fuller quicker. And it can also have other effects as well, which is why it can be used for type 2 diabetes, where it actually binds to pancreatic beta cells. These are the cells in the pancreas that secrete insulin, and it helps to regulate glucose-dependent insulin secretion. So this is also another important aspect of why some of the side effects occur, but why it's also helpful in patients who have type 2 diabetes. So let's first talk about some of the most common side effects. So one of the most common side effects is going to be nausea. Now, nausea is going to be something that occurs shortly after beginning administration of all of these medications. And it is essentially due to reduced gastric emptying. So because there's more food in the stomach, patients can feel nauseous. Now, here are the rates at which patients report nausea occurring. So you can see Ozempic occurs at 15 to 20%, Wagovi up to 44%, and the oral formulation, which is Rebelsis, occurs at 11 to 20%. And as we will see, a common theme with regards to these side effects is that Wigovi is going to have the most side effects. And again, Wigovi is the higher dose formulation of semaglutide. Another side effect is going to be vomiting. So along with the nausea, we can have vomiting. This can actually be excessive and uncontrollable. Some reports suggest that there can be uncontrollable, excessive vomiting for many hours. Often patients can report having food regurgitations. So essentially they regurgitate up food that has been undigested. And again, this is going to be due to decreased gastric emptying in patients who have already an underlying gastroparesis, which is a paralysis of the stomach. So they already have issues with gastric emptying. Taking semaglutide in one of these formulations is going to worsen their gastroparesis. So especially when we're talking about diabetic patients taking these medications, if they already have an underlying diabetic gastroparesis, this can worsen it. So there can be even worsened diabetic gastroparesis. So they can have worsened nausea and vomiting because of it. And again, here are the rates of occurrence. And again, we can see Wigovi occurring up to a quarter of patients. Another important adverse effect is going to be diarrhea. So increased frequency and or decreased consistency of stool. And again, we can see Wigovi being the formulation that causes the majority of the side effects up to 30% on Wigovi can experience diarrhea. And we can also have constipation in other patients as well. And sometimes we can have both diarrhea and constipation that alternate. So constipation is going to be decreased frequency and or increased consistency of stool. It affects, again, up to a quarter of patients taking Wigovi. And then we can see lower rates with these other medication formulations like Ozempic and Rebelsis. And then another important side effect we can see is hypoglycemia. Now we talked about semaglutide 
because it is a GLP-1 agonist, meaning that it binds to GLP-1 receptors, it can actually promote glucose-dependent insulin secretion. So it can actually secrete even more insulin. And this can actually lead to hypoglycemia, which is a low blood sugar. And we can see symptomatic hypoglycemia in some patients. And these symptoms include sweating, shaking, nervousness, irritability, dizziness, and tachycardia, which is a high heart rate. And it may be severe in some cases. We do find that the risk of hypoglycemia goes up dramatically when patients are taking other anti-diabetic medications. If they're only taking Ozempic or Wigovi and they're not taking any other medications, the risk for hypoglycemia is lower. So again, if it is a treatment that's used with other anti-diabetic medications, it increases the risk for hypoglycemia. And again, it has been reported with Ozempic and Wigovi use. We can also see issues with stomach pain. This can be significant as well. So patients describe having severe, diffuse abdominal pain. You can see these are the rates at which stomach pain can occur. And then another important side effect is heartburn or GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease. So it's an acid reflux, a burning sensation. And again, this is going to be due to food essentially sitting in the stomach if there's anything that leads to the opening of the lower esophageal sphincter because you have all this food content sitting in the stomach you can have reflux of that food content into the esophagus causing that burning sensation. And then here are, again, the rates of this side effect occurring. And there have been reported cases of a loss of bowel control being a potential side effect of these medications as well. So this loss of bowel control is going to be manifested as a bowel movement while sleeping. So patients are sleeping and they have a loss of bowel control and they can have a bowel movement during sleep. Again, these are anecdotal reports. Now, there are no official rates of occurrence for this, but there has been some anecdotal reports, and it seems to more likely occur with Wigovi use as well. We can also see issues with eructation. So eructation is burping. It's going to be burping more than usual. And again, we can see the rates of occurrence are going to be the highest with Wigovi. Flatulence is also something that can occur. So increased flatulence in some patients. So we can see it again with Ozempic, but especially with Wigovi. And then along with these, we can see abdominal distension. So abdominal distension is a bloating of the stomach. So it's going to be a lot of gas buildup in the stomach. And again, we can see rates are generally low with Wigovi being the highest. Now, these medications may cause other potential gastrointestinal and related issues. So there is a question of whether or not there's an increased risk of gastroenteritis. So this is an inflammation of the stomach and small intestines due to an infection. So there is some question as to whether or not there is an increased risk of gastrointestinal infections in patients who take these medications and especially viral infections. And this has been reported with Wigovi use, and it hasn't been reported so much with these other medications. Now, these medications may also cause irritation and inflammation of the gastric mucosa, which is gastritis, so an inflammation of the stomach. So again, we can see rates for this, Ozempic, Wigovi, and the oral formulation, Rebelsis. Again, Wigovi is going to be higher. And then cholelithiasis has also been reported. So cholelithiasis is going to be the presence of gallstones. So there may be an increased likelihood of developing gallstones. And the rates are lower for this, but we again can see this as a possibility. And there have been other post-market reports of a possible connection again with cholelithiasis, so gallstones, and requiring cholecystectomy, which is the removal of the gallbladder. Now, hair loss is also a potential adverse effect as well. This can be diffuse. It can be significant in some patients or long-lasting. And it's only been reported with Wigovi use. So roughly 3% of patients using Wigovi may lose some hair or a significant amount of hair. And then another side effect that has been reported is what we call the Ozempic face. This has been reported in media. It's essentially a gaunt-looking face, a sunken or sagging facial features. And along with these features, wrinkles may look more prominent, and all of this seems to be related to a rapid weight loss of the face. So loss of fatty tissue in the face may lead to a sort of sunken, dragged out look to the face. This may be the reason why we see these facial features in patients who are on Ozempic or on Wigovi. So mood changes have been noted in some cases as well. These include depression and anhedonia. Anhedonia is a lack of ability to experience pleasure. These are going to be anecdotal reports. There's no reported rates of this, but there have been patients that have noted these changes. So this is something to look out for as well. And then increased anxiety has also been noted in some patients. More frequent or severe panic attacks have been reported. And again, this is anecdotal. Again, no reported rates, but this is something that patients have also reported as well. 
Now, these medications can also cause a headache. So this may be due to hypoglycemia or low blood sugar in some cases. And a headache is going to mostly occur in Wigovi use. And then we can also see fatigue occurring. This is going to be usually an initial adverse effect that occurs when a patient first starts these medications, but then improves over time. And this mostly, again, occurs in Wigovi, but some patients who are on Ozempic may report this as well. And then dizziness is also a potential issue, so feeling lightheaded. This can be related to hypoglycemia or low blood sugar again. And then we can also see the rates of this being higher in Wigovi compared to Ozempic. And then the last thing I want to talk about is eye problems that have been reported. So retinal disorders have been linked to use with these medications. There is still some question as to the actual association between use of these medications and eye problems. Now, there have been some reported cases that these medications may worsen existing diabetic retinopathy. So if you already have diabetic retinopathy and you're started on one of these medications, it may actually worsen your diabetic retinopathy. And then some patients have also reported blurred vision. And these eye problems have only been reported with Wigovi use and the rate that has been reported is 6.9%. Now we'll talk about what to avoid if you're taking these medications in another lesson. And we'll also talk about how to reduce the risk of side effects. But one thing that has been noted is that starting off at the lowest dose possible and then slowly but gradually increasing the dose does seem to reduce the risk of side effects in general. So that's something to make note of as well. Please check out my lesson on amlodipine, metoprolol, and metformin. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.